In this episode, we'll be talking about how do you scale the practice of design on a global level? How much impact can designers make on important social questions? And finally, what does it mean to design for emerging technologies like AI, VR and IoT? And here's the guest for this episode. I'm Doug and this is the Service Design Show. If you're trying to design services that have a positive impact on people and are good for business, then you've come to the right place. Hi, my name is Mark Fontaine and welcome to the Service Design Show. On this show, you get the chance to learn why some services fail and others succeed. For that, we go beyond the usual tools and methods and talk about topics like design thinking, customer experience, organizational change and creative leadership. So if you're ready to take your service design skills to the next level and you haven't done it already, I'd love to have you to subscribe to this channel. My guest in this episode is Doug Powell. Doug is a distinguished designer at IBM Design and he's tasked with scaling design at IBM. For the next 30 minutes or so, Doug and I will be talking about how do you scale that practice of design on a global level? And we'll be talking about how much influence and impact can designers have on our big and important social challenges. Finally, we'll talk about what's needed to design for emerging technologies like AI, VR and IoT. So that was it for the introduction. And now let's jump straight into the interview with Doc. Welcome to the show, Doc. Hi, Mark. It's great to be here. Uh, awesome that you made time uh, all the way uh, from Austin, Texas, USA in the IBM Design Studio, right? That's right. That's right. Here we are in uh, Austin, Texas. We've got about 350 designers uh, based here in, in Austin. It's the home base of the, uh, the design program for IBM globally. Hmm. Um, this is called the Service Design Show. Um, so I'm going to ask you the question that I ask everyone, and that is, do you recall your first memory of service design? When did you encounter the term? Um, you know, I, I think I actually encountered the, the term service design probably 10 or 12 years ago in a conversation with um, with Michael Beirut, who's a, a, a very um, renowned designer here in the US, you might have heard of him, graphic designer. Uh, and, and he's, a, he's, a, he's a, a big thinker about design and always kind of curious about new, new design trends. But he's also, he's also very true to his, his own roots as a graphic designer. Mm. And, uh, and, and so he kind of has a, a curmudgeonly um, uh, you know, quality to him sometimes. And he gets very impatient with you know, new design practices <laughs> that he hears about. And, and so Michael and I were, were at... Uh, you know, he was, he's a very generous guy and he, he and I were having a drink together and, and he said, have you, have you heard of this thing called service design? What on earth could service design? <laughs> I have no idea what service design is. And he went on this sort of short rant about service design and, and, uh, and, and it was very, it was very memorable to me. And of, of course, you know, uh, I, I went off and, and read everything I could about service design to make sure I knew what, uh, <laughs> did, what did, did he have design. a point? Did he have a, was there some truth in his rent? Oh, there always is with Michael. There's, there's both, uh, you know, you kind of have to, um, uh, you know, uh, look past the, um, the, the bravado and, mm, and, mm. uh, and, and, and there's always there's always some truth there. Um, I, I think I think what Michael uh, really responds to um, is that there there is a, a core of cra of craft being craftsmen and craftspeople uh, that that is what is at his core as mm. a designer. Mm. And and I, I think it's part of all of our. Uh, all uh, who we all are as designers in, in different ways, and and I think he laments that some of the new practices of of design, user experience design, uh -huh. and service design, and design thinking, and you know, call it what you will, um, sort of the expansion of the of the 
of the practice um, really uh, feels to him and to many of his generation that we're getting away from the, the core uh, craft um, orientation and the core craft principles that, that really uh, drew many of us to, to being designers to begin mm. with. Interesting discussion. Uh, next time we meet over a beer, we'll continue this one. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Doug, uh, you've sent me three topics we can talk about uh, now. Uh, I've got them printed here on my piece of paper. You've got a digital version of the question starters. Let's go create the topics. Uh, are you ready? I'm ready. Let's go. Awesome. Um, this one, I think, is super dear to your heart, uh, being at IBM, scaling the practice of design, I'd say, as, at an unprecedented scale. Uh, can you make a question, a question around this? Well, I think it's a how, I think it's a how can we, um, and I hope you can see that. Uh, sort phone. of, sort of. A, a, a how can we question. Here, I'll hold it very close That's, there. Yeah, that works. But I would say how, how can we scale the practice uh, of design at a global level um, within, you know, companies and organizations that uh, that are, you know, uh, that are global. Um, arguably, that that you know that really has not happened until very recently, and IBM is in in the midst of attempting to answer that question um, and and to do just that. Um, it's a it's a question for me that's that's a fascinating one, you know, and it's one of the things that drew me to uh, to to coming to IBM initially was the 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 challenge of of taking this practice that we've all um, that 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 historically has happened in a very small setting, you know, um, even when it's been in uh, in big companies. The practice of design has been sort of centralized and localized in in, uh, in a department or a, a, a you know yeah, a certain yeah, part yeah. Of the company, or it's been in an agency or a, a you know uh, an academic setting or whatever. And here we're talking about a company of three hundred and eighty thousand people in one hundred and seventy countries, um, a company that's been around for over a hundred years, uh, and. And we needed to think about it in a completely different way, and we need to we needed to understand the systems of the of the company in order to um, uh, in order to build our program. In in some cases, on on top of those systems, in some cases, making new systems. So mm -hmm. it's a very complex question, and one that that you know has kept me very busy for the last five years here. When I was thinking about this topic, a question that came to my mind is the global aspect. How does that change the challenge of scaling design and does it change the Absolute, challenge of scaling design? Absolutely. It changes it in, in so many ways. Um, partly because, uh, you know, our, our teams, uh, the teams that our designers are working on are not all sitting together in the same space. Uh, they're, they're almost always distributed teams. And by team, I mean a cross-disciplinary team. So that'll include designers, um, product managers, engineers, you know, business mm. leaders, marketers, and so on. Um, that team is, in most cases, going to have you know, centers and, uh, and, and pods in many different uh, parts of the world. Um, and so, you know that alone, that that notion of how do we do, how do how do we apply a design-driven approach to our work, when uh, you know when we have that that situation of a distributed team, so that forces uh, some some really um, you know sort of fundamental rethinking of how the team operates and uh, and and communicates with each other and how we collaborate as uh, as as a as a cross disciplinary team so how, what are your insights related to that is that something that, that we can solve we can work around or is this something that is so embedded in the design process that it's almost impossible to solve no i think it's not only something that we can solve i think we have to solve it uh -huh. I, I think 
You know, this is, you know, think of IBM as and the and the scale that we're operating at uh, as, you know, kind of a a predictor or an early indicator of of where design programs of the future are mm -hmm. going. I really think that ten years from now. I, you know, I expect that IBM will no longer be the largest, uh, you know, design organization in the world. We are now, but but I, I think that other companies will will emulate what we've uh, what we've built here, um, and uh, and and so the practices that we're and the approaches that we're, you know, devising to to meet this challenge are are really, uh, you know, going to be picked up by other. By other organizations, uh, you know, as they try to do the same, hmm. I, I think it's a it's a um, it's a matter of as far as insights and what we're learning, it's a combination of tooling and behavior. Um, it's a it's a think of the the tooling being like what what you and I are using yeah, right now, yeah. video, um, uh, you know platform to communicate with each other so that's part of it and we've got a whole platform of tools that you know include you know video conferencing and and you know um, uh, virtual sticky note like you know <laughs> forms and so on um, that's that's important but there's also you also need to sort of train your team to um, to behave a different way and to uh, and and to you know to um, to to learn to communicate differently mm -hmm. and by that I mean for instance you know we have teams that are in very different time zones so um, uh, you know a team might have one a design team in in Austin Texas and a um, a uh, you know a dev team in Tel Aviv for instance um, you know, that's challenging because their work day only overlaps by about two hours a day. <laughs> yeah. So they need to, they need to figure out, you know, they need to alter their, their cadence and the way that they work in order to, uh, you know, in, in order really to, to take most advantage of those two hours a day that they're both, you know, that they're both working. Hmm. Uh, so that's, that's very, uh, that's very challenging. So um, when I was thinking about this topic, also the question that came to my mind was scaling the practice of design. What is it exactly that we want to scale? Uh, well, we we want to scale output eventually. Uh, I mean, we want to scale the um, the productivity of designers and the teams that they're working on. Um, you know, we want to take you know. Uh, a, we want to to replicate a high functioning team. You know, we want to figure out what's working with that team, and we want to do that twenty or a hundred or five hundred times over. You know, uh, that's 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 what scaling means. It's it's really all about output and putting, you know, getting our teams functioning as 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 uh, as smoothly and as as efficiently as we can. Topic number two, let's go. Um, <clears throat> and this one um, seems a little bit different. So uh, really curious what you'll make out of this one. It's called social impact and change. Do you have a question starter related to this one? Well, um, let's, uh, let's see here. Um, I'm gonna say, uh, I'm gonna say it's, uh, it's how much impact can designers have on uh, on the biggest and most complex problems of the world um, that's a you know that that's that's a big a big question I mean a big question not not just for me but for all of us I, I think designers naturally have a uh, uh, an, an inclination to uh, to do Good for the world that they that they live within, and um, and, and to try to make positive change, and um, that's uh, you know so we we find ourselves you know drawn to uh, situations where we can um, you know where we can have that kind of impact, um, but we're not we we tend not to be 
all that good at it, frankly. Hmm. I think our I think our ideas are are often novel and um, you know and and interesting and creative, but I don't think that they actually solve the solve the social problem that they're trying to trying to solve. Um, and and that that's and, and so I think that you know there's a there's a huge opportunity for designers to to make an impact in the world, um, a positive impact in the world. But I, I, I don't think that we uh, really deliver on that. What are we lacking? What, are we missing skills? Are we missing tools? Uh... Yeah, we're, list, we're missing skills and tools and, and connections. We're, we're missing uh, the, the relationships with uh, with the people who really do know how to do, you know, to to um, to to make change, um, you know, we're not very well connected in that world. There are people who are actually quite good at it, and um, and they need our help too because they're 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 running out of ideas, and we have ideas. So we need to find those people. So it's it's skills, it's tools, and it's a network. Um, and, uh, and I also think it's humility, you know, um, I, I, I think we, um, we go into these situations where there's a problem to be solved and we think that, um, that we've got to be the ones to solve it and that we, and that we need to invent something new in order to solve it. Um, and uh, that's that's classic. That's classic behavior for a designer. I mean, we 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 we've got great ideas, and we've we you know we've got um, the means to sort of make make these ideas happen. But um, uh, you know, but but we often too often times don't listen well enough. Uh, we don't uh, we we don't pay attention to. We don't really study the problem. And we lose patience. You know, the the, hmm. the social, the, the real social impact happens over years and even decades. And designers tend to, you know, they get their idea knocked out, and then they're on to the next thing. And that's that's a, uh, you know, that that's that that that's not uh, that that's not going to lead to really meaningful um, social impact change. Uh, you know, in my opinion. Should we be judging ourselves and the whole design community on uh, the thing you said in the previous topic, outcome? Are we actually delivering upon our promise? Yeah, absolutely. Hell yeah. I mean, <laughs> we, you know, we, we, we shouldn't be judging on did this, did this uh, creative idea win a, win a design award? Um, am I able to, to show this, you know, website or video or app or poster in a, yeah, yeah. In a design conference, but, um, but, uh, but really how many lives did this change and how can we quantify the impact that we've had? Yeah, absolutely. Measurement is, is uh, of the outcome is, is super important. So this, this could be interpreted like a quite, um, pessimistic view on design. I, do, do you have a spark of hope that we can change oh, this? Where, where do we I, have to look for answers? Where, who can help us? Yeah, I'm totally hopeful. I'm <laughs> totally hopeful. I just think that we're at a point where we need to, we need to get really serious about this. Uh, if, if, uh, uh, and I think there are some leaders who, who, are, who are doing just that. Um, but I, I, I think it's alliances with you know, government agencies and um, and NGOs yeah. and, uh, and and other established you know organizations who are really doing doing this kind of work. I look at like uh, um, UNICEF uh, has a great uh, design and innovation team uh, within their organization. That's that's exciting to me. Where there's a where there's a new practice, the new practice of design and innovation. That's emerging within an established, you know, organization whose mission is to to uh, is mi whose mission is positive social impact. Um, that that's a that's a great combination. That's a really potent um, uh, recipe right there. Hmm. Hmm. Too often, design is still just just an experiment, right? It's it's 
yeah, yeah, too often, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, what is the biggest question you have yourself related to this topic, you know, what, when you think about when you go to bed at night and you think about this social impact uh, topic, what, what is the question that comes to your mind? Well, I think there's a there's a question around. Uh, I mean, quite honestly, around funding. Hmm. Uh, you know, how do we get to the money? Um, when I when I when I mentioned a moment ago that social impact takes time. Well, if you're a designer uh, who, um, you know, and 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 you want to make uh, you know make an impact on a social issue, and you determine that that's going to take ten years to do that. You can't just donate your time for ten years. I mean, that's you, you know, you'll you'll go bankrupt, right? You, you, that's unsustainable. So, so where where is the money? Well, there is money in in uh, in this space, and we need to find ways to um, to find that money and and get that money redirected toward designers rather than toward. You know, some of the more traditional um, organizations that uh, that that, mm. that that are in this space. I, I think we have the title for our episode. How do we get the money? That would be a good one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Give me the money. Um, topic number three, uh, Doc, because this one, and uh, I'm just starting to notice that you have three really distinct topics. So that's really cool. Uh, topic number three is called designing for emerging technologies. Right, right. Okay, so what question starter? Our, what is our question here? Um, let's see. I would say I, I don't want to use the same questions over twice here, so I'm going to make this a. Um, uh, a wh why do we need to be uh, designing differently for um, for emerging technologies? Uh, this is the you know, a question that we are uh, faced with here at IBM, a technology What, what are emerging technologies? Well, yeah, so let's, uh, I mean, uh, three that come to mind for me are um, AI or artificial or augmented intelligence, um, uh, virtual reality, uh, IoT, Internet of Things. Um, these are all technology, you know, technologies that are not only emerging, but in some cases they have emerged, you know, yeah, they're, yeah, yeah. they're, they're there. Um, and, uh, and they're being used and, and yet designers really haven't had impact yet, in my opinion, on those technologies. And, and, um, you know, we are going to have to, uh, find new ways to, Interact for for people to interact with these uh, with these technologies. Um, when you think about um, AI, for instance, I mean, there's there's there, there's a whole way of interacting with um, with machine learning and with artificial intelligence that we haven't invented yet. We we literally haven't figured out you know how does the human have an interaction with this this uh, this <laughs> system this is technology yeah. right and, um, and that's a fascinating that's a fascinating uh, question and, and for for really curious and technical designers that's that's something that um, you know and we've got many of those here at mm -hmm. IBM that that's something that is a, is a really great challenge um, so when you think about I mean um, like how do we have a conversation with uh, with a machine, um, to, you know, our our current way is through a Google search. Say, so we're typing in, we're typing in, you know, a bunch of mm -hmm. keywords. Mm -hmm. But but moving forward, you know, it's going to be voice, and it's going to be you know other you know motion, um, and so the the notion of a you know of sound design. Being something that you know is going to emerge as uh, you know as a whole new uh, practice area. It's already a practice area, but I mean, you know, ten years from now, I can imagine that that the you know the academic design programs are going to be filled with sound designers because 
there's going to be a whole new, a whole need for that type of way. The, the way that we, we relate to our, our technology is going to be through our voice. Um, you know, that's just one, one, uh, one example, uh, you know, virtual reality, reality provides a whole other way. How do we in, uh, interact with a virtual space when we're in it? Um, you know, do, are we pushing virtual buttons or are we, you know, signaling some in some other way that, that something needs to happen with the, with the space we're in, you know, these are these are just just really cool um, cool and interesting uh, areas that I think designers are going to have some great impact on in, in the next decade or so. When I read this topic, I was thinking, you know, these technologies in essence um, are just new design materials that we have to learn the properties of, right? Yes. Yes. Um, Yes, they, they are. And, and, and I think that's important, yeah, for us to, to not be um, intimidated by, uh, by the technology, but to break it down, as you say, into its core elements and to, you know, just understand it at its, at its uh, essence uh, that can, uh, can really allow us then to say, okay, this is a design problem. You know, this is, a, this is, this is something that um, you know, that even, uh, you know, a great graphic designer, craft driven graphic designer like Michael Beirut, who I mentioned earlier in the, in the discussion is going to still have, uh, have a fascination with and to still be able to engage with in a, in a really strong way. Yeah. You just said something like we shouldn't be afraid of the technology. So are we afraid? And if so, why is that? Sometimes I, I think you know. I think that's that's perhaps one of the one of the ironies of of, uh, of designers is that we tend to, um, in some ways, sort of embrace change and and really be pushing the edges. But but in many other ways, we you know, when something new comes along, uh, you know, again back to my story about Michael, uh, you know. He he had heard about service design. He was he, he didn't understand it, and and so he assumed that it, you know that it must be um, you know that it must be uh, threatening in some way. Um, and I think we need to I, I think we need to get beyond that. I think we need to be really sort of um, embracing uh, these new challenges and and really be curious about uh, about them as opposed to be you know, threatened by them. I guess curiosity and, and um, playing around with these technologies is the only thing that will accelerate how um, our path towards understanding them, right? Yeah, I think those are essential qualities for a designer. I think humility, I think curiosity, I think empathy. Those are, if, if you know, those are the, those are the three for me, three essential qualities of a designer, um, you know, the, the, the craft and the aesthetic and, and, and everything else needs to, needs to be there, of course, but, but humility, curiosity, and empathy will get you a long way. <laughs> <laughs> That's also and, a good one to remember. Yeah. And if you don't have them, uh, then you're going to really struggle. No, no, the, the question is if you if you can be a designer then. But, um, I know you haven't prepared for this question, but this is the last question I'm going to ask you in uh, in this episode, and that is: Do you have a question for us, for the viewers, for the listeners of this episode? What would you like to know from us? Um, what would I like to know from the listeners of of this? Well. Um, 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 I guess what what is uh, what what is the thing that that holds you back, or what is the thing that you feel is is really uh, preventing you from doing your very best work as a designer? Um, I, I I think we we all that's a that's another very designerly trait to to have 
to kind of not complain, but kind of complain about, you know, <laughs> if I only had, if I only had this thing, then boy, I'd be able to do, you know, amazing work. You know, mm -hmm. what is that for you? And, uh, um, that, it's, it's, it's a superpower question, you know, if, if, yeah, you, if we, yeah. you could have a new superpower tomorrow, what right. would it be? Right. Right. I mean, for instance, we, we had always, um, we had always said for many years, uh, if, if we only had a seat at the table, you know, if we were only in the business discussions that um, that preceded, you know, the design problem, uh, then boy, we could we could do whatever we, you know. We could have so much impact, and and that's that's basically what we have here at IBM now. We we have a seat at the table, and we are impacting the the direction of the business in you know, in a very direct way. Um, and so, but yet there, there are still, you know, you ask any designer in this organization and they're still going to say, well, yeah, but you know, I still, I, I, I still have these blockers and these challenges and these, hmm. you know, things that I, I can't get rid of. And if only I could, I, you know, that's, that, that's, that's really, let's, let's invite people to comment starting with, if only I could, that's a that would be a really good uh, uh, answer starter in the comments. I Doc, like thanks so much for making time, sharing uh, what's happening at IBM, sharing what's happening in your head. Uh, yeah, it was a pleasure and an honor to have you here on the show. So thanks again. Yeah, thank you, Mark. It was a, it was a good conversation. I enjoyed it. So what would enable you to make more impact tomorrow? Let us know down below in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, please leave a thumbs up. I'd really appreciate that. If you know someone who might benefit from the things we've just discussed in this episode, please share this video with them. And if you'd like to learn more, check out some of the past episodes or head over to learn.servicedesignshow.com where you'll find courses by leading service design experts that dig deeper into the topics we talk about on the show. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.